Hi, I'm Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with uh, NDSU Ag Communication, and uh, this month's webinar is on Office Mix. Um, I was able to share some information about Office Mix at Fall Conference, but we thought we'd follow up for anybody who uh, missed that. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do today is really just give you kind of a rough uh, walkthrough of Office Mix. Hopefully my screen sharing uh, works out okay. It's a little bit dicey because um, Office Mix, uh, one of its main uh, advantages is the easy way that it can that it can record audio and video onto your PowerPoint slides. Um, and so because I'm using my audio and video for the uh, the Skype meeting here, um, hopefully we won't get any conflicts and, and I'll be able to demo things uh, all right for you. Uh, a couple of things to cover um, before we uh, before we get started. First of all, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to turn on your mic and interrupt me if you want, um, or you can use the the chat, the conversation. If you're not familiar with Skype, uh, that's down in the lower left. You'll see a little speech bubble down there. You can open that up. Um, just to introduce you a little bit to Office Mix, Office Mix uh, was is an add-on to Microsoft PowerPoint uh, that was created about three years ago. Um, it was sort of a one of these tests that uh, some of the bigger technology companies do uh, a lot of times just to see if this if these features work and um, if people would use them and so it was really targeted at educators and um, k-12 educators uh, primarily um, and over the last three years um, they've built that functionality into into office mix um, and actually now starting this fall shortly before I, I presented at, at fall conference um, they're they're going to be retiring it now the functionality I show you today you're still going to be able to use um, but they're sort of uh, they're sort of moving away from the idea of having this separate tool and moving more towards integrating these capabilities within uh, PowerPoint um, and some other tools like Microsoft Stream and Microsoft Forms as part of Office 365. Um, the first step in, in using Office Mix is to get the plugin for PowerPoint and you can get that here. I just shared it in the chat. It's mix.office.com uh, and you just download. Uh, it says get Office Mix. You click that and it's a download that you get an exe file and when you run that file what happens is it adds a tab to your ribbon on Microsoft PowerPoint and gives you that capability um, to use Office Mix when you're using PowerPoint on your desktop. So um, I'm going to show it to you so you get some idea of what it is and how it works and then we'll see if there are, are any questions or, or comments or those kinds of things. So I'm going to turn off my video first of all so that we don't have that, that that conflict with the camera when we use it in Office Mix and then I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen here. Alright, looks like it's connecting and there you should be seeing uh, my PowerPoint screen. Uh, if someone wants to tell me in the chat if you're seeing that uh, I have PowerPoint open. Awesome, thanks Dean. Um, so I just have my PowerPoint open just like I would have any PowerPoint open um, and because I've I've installed that plugin you'll see up in my ribbon up here one of my options is mix um, you see that towards the end of the ribbon um, and so what I'm going to show you I'm going to focus on primarily is how to easily record audio and video on your PowerPoint slides and then you know the idea being that you could use that then to turn your PowerPoints into a video that you could share on YouTube or or other places as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the mix button here and show you some of the options in here. Um, like I said today we're gonna focus mostly on this slide recording option which is the primary um, uh, primary way that I think most of us will be will be using it. You can see there's some other things here as well. Uh, quizzes and video apps, uh, quizzes, videos, and apps. Um, Mix uh, includes some interactive elements that um, you know, like quizzes. You can click on a screen and and um, click on the screen as you're watching a mix and interact with with certain elements. Um, those uh, only worked 
when you could upload mixes to that Office Mix website that I shared in the in the chat. Um, and now that that's being retired, um, there's some question about how those interactive elements are going to be delivered. Um, it sounds like they're going to be delivered through Microsoft Stream, which is sort of a video sharing uh, service that's part of our Office 365. But I'm really going to de-emphasize those interactive parts because I'm just not sure yet exactly how they're going to be delivered. But um, Microsoft says they are going to build it into Office 365, and so hopefully in the future, as we know more, we'll be able to utilize those, those interactive portions of Mix as well. Uh, there's an easy button here for screen recording. You might have different ways that you use screen recording, and of course screen recording is, or at least screen capture is built into uh, Windows, um, but this is an easy way to do a screen recording. So if you're going to demo some software or something like that, you could jump in here, click this screen, click this button. I'm not going to do it now because I'm already sharing my screen in Skype, but you would define a, a portion of your screen and then it would record whatever happens in that portion of your screen along with your audio. So you could do like a, a narration, a walkthrough of software. Same thing here with screenshot. Um, you could take a snapshot of the screen. Again, you have that capability elsewhere in Windows, but this is an easy way if you're trying to grab uh, a screenshot of something uh, while you're in PowerPoint. You don't have to go out to a different program and those kinds of things. We'll cover some of these other um, buttons uh, later, but those are the, the primary kind of capabilities. Um, that are that are available in Mix, and now I'll show you what we're going to focus on, which is is the slide recording. So if I have this presentation, um, I delivered it face to face um, in Minneapolis a few weeks ago, and um, now let's just say that hey, I want to share this with more people. So um, I didn't have anybody record my face to face session, so. Um, uh, so now maybe I want to put some audio and potentially some video on top of this um, and so that I could save it as a video, share it to YouTube or send it out to people uh, to, to view if they couldn't come to the face-to-face -face, um, um, workshop. So I would start that by going to slide recording. Um, and let me open that up and you can see what that looks like. It's actually going to launch a whole new kind of screen here for us when we go into slide recording. Um, the stuff that you're going to see, I'm going to start over on the on the right hand side in that column over there where it says audio and video. Are you guys seeing that on the right hand side where it says audio and video? Yes, hopefully. Okay, maybe everyone's waiting yes. for someone else to respond. Yes. Awesome, awesome, thank you, whoever that was. Um, so, uh, you can see audio and video there, uh, and you might be able to see, depending on how it's coming across on Skype, there's a little bar down below where it says microphone. Uh, as I'm talking into my microphone, that's showing my audio levels there. So I know that my, my microphone is selected to the correct microphone. If I was to just record audio over the top of this slide, I'd be ready to go. If I wanted to add video, um, where it says no camera here, I could go ahead and select a camera. This is the part that I hope still works, even though I've got my camera open in Skype. Yeah, there it is. So you should see now up in the in the top right under audio and video there, you can see a little preview of me um, on my camera. So uh, now I'm ready to record both audio and video on top of this slide. Um, below the audio video section there, um, you'll see some inking options. So the other thing that it will record when you're doing a slide recording is markups that you make on the screen. So you can make some of these selections in advance. Uh, these pens here are just the thickness of the pen. Um, there's a fine, medium, and, and thick. There's an eraser, and, and you'll have access to this uh, once we start recording as well. Um, but you could preset some things in here. So if I pick the medium pen and then I pick a color, let's say green, um, then that's ready to go uh, for my slide recording. Okay. So those are sort of your presettings under audio and video. Choose your video input device. Choose your audio input device. Make sure that your microphone's working. If you're going to do inking, go ahead and, and choose uh, the, the thickness of the pen and the color that you'd want to, to do. And then you can go ahead and hit record. So I hit record here. 
And what you'll see is that the, the buttons up at the top left change. I don't have that record button anymore. I've got a pause button, a stop button, and some buttons to advance the slides. Um, or to go back in the slides uh, or to advance animation. So I have some different buttons up there. You can see there's a counter there so that I know I'm recording. I'm 22 seconds in. Um, but uh, as I'm talking, this, at this point, I'd be narrating my slides. If you look right in the top center there, you'll see some, some text on there. Um, that is the notes that I have in that slide. So that can serve as sort of a teleprompter for you. Um, depending on how many notes you have in there, you might need to scroll. And these buttons here, I don't know if you can see that as I'm mousing over them, allow you to scroll uh, down through uh, the notes on that slide. But that makes it easy, um, especially if you're doing video. If I didn't have this over on my right-hand screen, if I had it in my center screen where I have my camera, I could be looking right into the camera and reading my notes at the same time or referencing my notes at the same time. So I'm, I'm looking right into the camera. And then remember, we selected the inking before. I've got the medium pen uh, with the green color so I could come in here and draw in here. Um, I can change that on the fly over here on the right. Maybe the pen needs to be a little bit thicker and I want to do a different color and then I can go ahead and and uh, ink on the slide and so if I was um, doing this over the course of multiple slides and I wanted to keep the audio going and just stay recording I could click this uh, arrow to move to the next slide um, I find it easier just to do it slide by slide it, it sort of goes a little smoother for me and makes a little bit more sense so if I was just recording audio and video for this slide at this point I would go ahead and click stop and then it's going to return me back to this, um, this view that we started at, the slide recording view. And you're going to see a couple of things. Um, one is you can see my inking is on the screen, so uh, I know I captured some of that. And then up in the top right corner, you'll see my video there. I've got a video window um, that indicates that, that uh, I actually have video there. Um, if I was nervous, did it get recorded, didn't it get recorded? I could preview that slide recording right here. It says preview slide recording. Um, the other thing that I could do is to go ahead and edit that, uh, that recording a little bit. You can see here it says edit slide recording. I'm going to click on that. And I've got some different options here. Uh, the first one is trim slide recording. Um, the other two are delete slide recording or delete all recordings. You want to be careful not to accidentally click on those. Um, if, you're, if you don't intend to, because there's no uh, prompt to say, are you sure you want to delete? It's just if I hit delete slide recording, boom, that video is gone. So I'm going to show you the trim. It's pretty easy to do. I can just trim slide recording here. And uh, what you should see is it opens up this window in the middle. Um, and I could go ahead and start to play through my recording. And when I got to a point maybe where I'm not looking off to the side, which I, I did the whole time because that's where my, my slide was. But I can move this green bar up to hit the starting point that I want to hit um, to trim the front. And then I can trim the back by moving this red slider back to where I would find the end point. So I can't trim anything out of the middle. I can't edit the middle, but I can trim the beginning of end and end. And that can, uh, that can be helpful. You know, usually once you hit recording, you might take a breath or pause um, a second so that you might want to trim that off. Uh, when you stop recording, uh, sometimes you're stopping or you're looking for the stop button instead of looking into the camera. So you might want to trim that end a little bit where you're looking off camera. Um, that can be pretty uh, handy. If you're uh, having trouble getting the, the bar in exactly the right place that you that you want it, um, you can see right below that the start time and end time are on here and these little arrows will allow me to move like in you know fractions of a second. Um, so that might be if you're trying to get to a specific point um, those little arrows might help you uh, better than trying to move that bar uh, at the beginning or the end. Um, once I've trimmed that, I just hit OK. 
and now I'm back in my slide recording view and that recording has been trimmed. If I don't like how that turned out, let's say I preview it and I was like, oh, I, I sort of cut off a word at the end. Uh, none of those trims are, are permanent, right? So I can always go back into edit slide recording, trim slide recording, and I can move this green bar, you know, back a little bit. Oh, I, I cut off the first word. I want to move that back and maybe I want to move this a little bit as well. Click OK. Now that's been that's been updated, but I still have the whole video file uh, that I can access to to make adjustments to that. OK, so I want to show you, you know, how this ends up looking then. Um, in PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of screen recording. This will take just a second to kind of reboot. Um, and so here it is on my slide. And once I get back into slide view, just like I'm editing in, in PowerPoint, um, now I can move this video around. You know, it's not locked in that top right. I could move it wherever I want on the screen. I could resize it. So I'm just grabbing the corner here and dragging it to resize it. OK, um, and then if we go ahead and, and preview this slide from this view, which we sure can, just like we would any uh, any slideshow. Let's see if this works for us. Oops, that moved. Hold on a second. That moved to my other screen, but I can I can go ahead and preview that and uh, and see that uh, how it looks. Um, maybe reposition some things. This this inking comes through. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in my screen sharing, but this inking comes through as animation. So it happens in real time when you do the slide preview, just as I was drawing it. Um, in fact, you can kind of see that I lost the back end of my check mark. That's because I trimmed that recording down uh, to the point where I had not drawn that yet. Um, so if I if I trimmed that again back, we'd get the back end of the check mark uh, back in there. Um, does that make sense? Do you have any questions so far? Uh, great, Amanda. Yeah, it's it makes recording over a slide presentation a lot easier, I guess, in my opinion. Um, and it, it adds this video aspect, you know, that that we did not have uh, as an option in in just PowerPoint. Um, slide recording in PowerPoint, you know, narration has always been there, but uh, it's in my opinion, it's always been sort of a pain. Um, you know, with timings and rehearsing timings and different things like that. Um, it just made it a lot harder than it does in Mix. Um, one of the other things I'm going to show you here is just like what happens if you use animation. So I don't have any animations on, on these slides right now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some quick. So I don't know if you guys use animations a lot. Um, but you know, this is the idea where you can fade things in or fly them in and that kind of thing. So if I if I highlight this first bullet point here, Google Alerts, I could I could make that appear by going to animations and clicking appear. Right? That'll add that little uh, animation to that. Um, let me open the animation pane so I can see that. That makes me feel better that I actually just can see what's going on there. You know, so I can I highlight Feedly here. Let's make that appear next. Right, that should update my animation pane. Um, and let's do the same thing for Flipboard. If you're doing animations with Office Mix, you're going to want to stick to the simple ones. You know, appear and fade um, work pretty good. When we get into things like random bars and grow and turn and zoom and all those kind of crazy things, those don't really work very well uh, in Mix. Um, they don't actually show up. So your stuff just looks, you know, like it was there all the time. It, it doesn't get animated. Um, but appear and fade, I think fly in uh, works as well uh, when we're in mix. So I've got some animation on these on these three bullet points now. Let's jump back into mix. So I'm clicking my mix tab again. I'm going to slide recording. Right now I'm, I've selected the second slide, so it pops me right to that slide. Um, notice my my animation. Uh, is in effect, so we don't see any of those bullet points there at this point. 
Um, once we went ahead and started recording, though, let's go ahead and hit record. So uh, now I'm recording. I've got my notes up at the top. I could be talking through this, right, just like you you would in a presentation. And I'm like, okay, here's some here's some tools that you could use for purposeful discovery. And as I introduce each one, you'll see up here at the top. Uh, I've got a different kind of arrow with the little star by it that plays the next animation. So I don't have to worry about timings or rehearsing timings or anything like that. It's just like when I'm ready for this to show up, I just click on that, right? So here are three tools you can use for purposeful discovery. Uh, Google Alerts, I click that, it shows up. Uh, Feedly, I click that, it shows up. Uh, and whatever the last one was, Flipboard, I think. And I click that and that one shows up. Um, and so now those animations are timed to my audio uh, and video. I go ahead and, and stop that. Right, and if we if we previewed this, I don't know if the preview is gonna work. You're not gonna be able to hear the sound, I'm sure. But let's see if you can actually see the video when I click the preview button. I'm also in danger of locking up my computer with trying to do a webinar while previewing this. Um, but you should be able to see, as I get in here a little bit, that you'll see those animations uh, show up. My video is not playing, probably because of the computer issue with doing a webinar at the same time. You can see it's lagging quite a bit. If I wasn't doing that, uh, you'd, be able to, you'd be able to see that video playing uh, in real time. And so I'm killing time here while I wait for those to show up. but. Um, so that you can see that happen, um, or you could take my word for it. But here they should be coming up right now. There we go. So you can see those come up uh, synced with the audio uh, and the video. So let me get out of that here. Oops. There we go. And we should get back into slide recording here. All right. Um, and again, same thing as we looked at before. If I want to edit that, I can just come up here and trim the slide recording, and that will pop up for me again. I'm really taxing my computer here. It's, it's dragging on, trying to do all this stuff at once. Um, but you saw it before, right? So it's dragging that green bar, dragging the red bar uh, at the end to set those up. Um, We'll see if that actually pops up here for me. It's just grinding away. So in the meantime, while waiting for my computer to, to catch up with me, um, other questions, thoughts, comments? Okay, if you have questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the chat anytime. Hopefully I'm still coming through here. So here's the trim again. Just drag the green bar for where you want it to start. Drag the red bar where you want it to end. Again, just use the, and of course you can play it in here too so you get a sense of where, uh, where you want that red bar and green bar to be. Uh, you can adjust it with the arrows, you know, if you want to get really uh, close on the time. Um, and then click OK, and your trim is there. Again, remember, you can go in and trim it. Uh, you know, you can, the rest of the whole video is there, so you can go ahead and trim it um, otherwise as well. Uh, so if you if you didn't want to do, I'm going to go to the next slide here. If you didn't want to do a video and you just want to do audio, that's certainly uh, possible as well. Um, what you want to do is turn off your camera. So where I've got my camera selected here, if I just do no camera um, and then I record, um, then it's just going to be audio. Okay, so now as I'm recording, uh, I can go through. If I had animations, I could do that. Um, some people have asked before about can I record over two slides if you prefer to do it that way? You certainly could. So if I'm rep recording now and I go on and on, da 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 da, and now I'm ready to go to the next slide, I could just click this move to your next slide arrow up here. Now I'm on the next slide. I'm still doing uh, one recording, and now I'm recording on slide four as before I was recording on slide three. And if I stop that now, and uh, we go back out, 
let me close the slide recording and go back out to PowerPoint. You'll see I've got a recording here, this little speaker guy. I've got a recording on slide three and a recording on slide four. And so Mix automatically creates that separation. Like when I clicked that arrow to go to the next slide, it moved to the other recording. So those are two separate recordings now, even though when I was recording them, I did it as one take, right? Those are two uh, separate recordings. Um, and so again, this would, this would play um, if we were presenting. So if I wanted to play this and just hit present now, I could do that if I and it would play the audio uh, automatically over the um, over the slide. Um, but I have some other options for dealing with this as well. I see Dean's typing, so I'm going to see if Dean has a question. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, Dean. I mean, you know, technically you could move the slides, <laughs> uh, but yeah, then your then your recording is not going to make any sense. So yeah, if you're if you're recording it like that, then you're going to want to keep the slides in that order. Um, that might be a reason uh, why you you know you could you might want to record it one slide at a time. Um, then if you move something, that recording stays with that slide, and hopefully it makes sense in that in that context, uh, even if you do move the slide with the recording. Okay. Um, other questions? So a couple things, some, some questions that came up uh, at Fall Conference. One was, can I put a video on top? on the same slide that I have a slide recording on and the, the answer to that is no you can't you can't like play a video in the background um, and then put your sort of narration video over the top of that you know so when I say play a video in the background like you know import a video insert a video or you know a YouTube video or something like that you can't have those on the same slide so we ran into this issue uh, with a presentation uh, that I was working with Sean Brotherson on um, where he ran into that issue and, and we just fixed it really very simply. Uh, all we did was uh, put the narration, we, we created another slide, an extra slide as sort of an intro to the YouTube video um, and then we uh, recorded the narration uh, on that slide and then just put the YouTube video on its own on the next slide. Um, and then when we produce that into a video, it just flows absolutely naturally. So the narration plays on the on the introduction slide, and then when you get to the next slide, um, the video that's on that next slide plays and gets recorded, and it, and it just works like a charm. So so you can't stack video and audio uh, on a single slide, um, but there's definitely ways to incorporate other video and audio files just by including them on a separate slide. Okay, so I'm trying to think if I missed anything else in slide recording. We looked at the notes that you can use as as sort of a teleprompter. Um, we recorded the audio and video. We looked at inking. Um, we looked at how we would do animations. So I think I think we've covered all of that. Um, so now what would you do with this? So if I had gone through all these slides and I recorded my uh, my narration over the top of them either audio or audio and video or video on some slides and just audio on other slides however you uh, choose to kind of put it together um, this would be an easy way to just create that into a video so one of the options that you'll see here um, in uh, the mix tab right so we're looking at the mix tab in PowerPoint again is export to video um, so once I'm ready to go on this, I would just click export to video. And let me close the animation pane. That Hopefully that'll look a little bit better over here. So you should see over on the right side, you've got the, the export to video pane. Um, the first thing that you choose is size. Um, my rule of thumb on size is just use the highest quality, biggest size that you can get as long as you have the storage. Uh, to support that file size, right? Um, so full HD is great. That way we know that it's going to work on lots of different devices in lots of different contexts. Um, but if you're trying to email it to somebody, 
the, the file size is probably going to be too big, right? So you might want to go to a smaller size uh, based on that. Um, so, but I'm going to leave it as, as full HD, assuming I've got room to store it on my computer, and then maybe I'm going to upload it to YouTube. Uh, I could potentially upload it to uh, Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive um, and share it that way. Um, so once you choose your video size, then uh, it, you see this question down here, hopefully, it says second spent on each slide. So the time that is spent on each slide is dictated first by any recordings on that slide, right? So if you put narration on that slide, that slide is going to be up exactly as long as your narration is, right? What you've trimmed it to. Um, if you've put, if you've inserted a video, like from YouTube or, or another video that's not your narration, if you put that on a slide, that slide is going to be up as long as that uh, as that video lasts, um, exactly as long as that video lasts. If you have any slides in there um, that you didn't put narration on or that don't have any kind of recording or inserted audio or video, then that's where you could set this time, right? So I don't know what an example of that would be. I think somebody, um, we talked about it uh, at fall conference and some people had some ideas of when you might use that, um, maybe on a, on a final slide or something, like if you had some credits or something on a final slide um, and you weren't doing any narration on it, uh, you could set this time to say, all right, leave it up for five seconds or leave it up for 10 seconds um, or however long that you wanted to do that. So that only applies to slides that do not have uh, any recording on them at all. So once I've chosen that, I click my next button here. And hopefully you can see, you, should get a, you get a pop up, right? Where do I want to save this? You'll see that it's, it's exporting as an MP4 file, very common video file uh, that will, you can upload to YouTube, you can upload to Vimeo, like I said, OneDrive, Google Drive, lots of ways to use an MP4. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and save that. Um, this is going to process for a while, so we probably won't get to the end of this because th there's a lot of slides on here, even though I only put a couple of recordings on. But I do want to go ahead and hit save because I want to show you what happens on your PowerPoint screen, hopefully. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. This can be kind of scary and concerning. Um, over here on the right in that export to video pane, you'll see that there is a status bar there, um, and it's at 0%. Um, that status bar uh, doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know why, um, but it, you you could wait forever. It will always be at zero percent. Um, the status bar that you really want to look for, and um, is way down here on the bottom. So if you can see at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see in that uh, kind of orangish red bar, it says creating video and it shows me the, the file name there. And to the right of that, there's a status bar. Um, if my computer was running faster and uh, this wasn't such a big video, we might actually see that status bar move uh, today. Um, Hopefully we'll see something, but that's the actual status bar that works. So don't get freaked out if you start exporting to video and this uh, this status bar up here stays at 0%. Don't stop, don't abandon your, your export. Um, just look, at, look for that status bar down in the bottom. That's the one that uh, actually shows the, the real progress. Okay. So, like I said, this probably won't get uh, processed in the time that uh, that we have together today, especially with running uh, multiple things on my computer here. Uh, but it it doesn't take it doesn't take very long um, to process something. Uh, obviously, the more slides, the more recording, the longer the recording, the longer it's going to take uh, to process. But it's not something that for 20 slides it takes overnight to process. It's not that way at all. If you're if you think your total video is probably going to be you know 20 minutes long, then it's probably going to take 50, 10 to 15 minutes to process. It's it's really doesn't take that long at all. Um, once it gets created, like I said, you end up with an MP4 file. It's a file on your computer. You can do whatever you want with it, including uploading it to to YouTube or sharing it on a on a file server or anything like that. So other questions. Uh, no. Um, 
you could do that. Um, you'd have to go ahead and put the notes or, you know, if, you, if you're using your notes as uh, a prompt for your audio recording, um, you'd have to go ahead and put it on the slide, right? So create, you know, insert text and put it on the slide somewhere. Um, that would be one way to handle that. Um, closed captioning right now, a lot of times we, you know, which is one reason why we're big YouTube users. Uh, YouTube does some um, some captioning um, in their in-video tool. So YouTube videos uh, are automatically captioned. Um, the accuracy of that is, is uh, you know, it's a machine doing it. So um, it's not 100% accurate, um, but it's it's about as accurate as uh, you know the automated closed captioning that you see you know, uh, on uh, broadcast TV in real time. So um, yeah, that's a good question, Sarah. But yeah, you'd have to add your own captioning as text on the screen or upload it somewhere where that captioning is is um, is offered. Other questions. You're welcome, Sarah. So if you're seeing my screen share now, you might be able to see there's just a little tiny movement in that status bar right now. So that's the status bar down at the bottom in the orange. That's where you want to be looking. And uh, even though there's a little bit of status there, a little bit of movement there, you'll see where I set up where it says export to video. That one is still 0%. So don't be thrown off by that. Other questions? thoughts, ideas. All right, awesome. So mix.office.com is where you get the add-on. Um, and you once you install that, you should see that uh, in your in your ribbon uh, when you open PowerPoint up at the top. Um, you do have to have PowerPoint closed when you're installing it. It should prompt you to do that if you don't have PowerPoint uh, closed. Um, there are some tutorials out there too. You can see there the using mix tutorials, but it is pretty simple to use, and I think it's a simple way to add narration and add that extra element, that extra uh, engagement of of people seeing your face uh, as well. If you want to capture the video um, while you're doing your narration as well, um, like I said, they are changing things around a little bit. Um, if for some reason, mix.office.com goes away or you can no longer download the plugin from there, I have a copy of it. So if you run into that or any problems with Mix, uh, go ahead and contact me. Uh, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. And uh, if for some reason Microsoft takes that away, um, I've got the executable file I can send you so that you could uh, you could install it in your current version of PowerPoint. Hopefully what's going to happen as we all sort of adjust to the new world of doing a lot of this kind of uh, work uh, that we're used to doing in Microsoft Office on our computers. We're going to be sort of shifting that towards Office 365. That seems to be the general trend. But hopefully as we do that, um, Microsoft will be uh, implementing a lot of these features directly into PowerPoint Online um, and the other tools that they are, that they are uh, creating for Office 365. Okay, well, if there's no other uh, no other questions, I'm gonna stop presenting and wrap this thing up. Like I said, if you have any questions at all, uh, contact me. Uh, happy to to speak with you and help you out with Office Mix. And if you do create an Office Mix um, and, and export a video from it, I'd love to to hear about it um, and talk to you about how the process went. So, um, if no other questions. Those of us who have snow will brave the snow, and uh, you all have a good day.